Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to be answering question number two from the Solomon F C3 collection, which I've now called the P3 collection, as the Edexcel have changed their C3 into P3, Pure Mathematics 3. And um, this question is also question number two from my end of topic worksheet uh, number two, which is about functions and graphs. And this is uh, question number three from that worksheet, actually. And this is question two from the Solomon F paper. The functions f and g are defined as follows. f of x um, is 1 minus ax, and g of x is x squared plus 2ax plus 2. Now, this is just uh, the same thing, basically, more or less, as writing in this way. f of x is 1 minus ax, and g of x is x squared plus 2ax plus 2. Now, where a is a constant. Um, so this is a function f and this is a function g, where a is a constant. Find the range of g in terms of a, the range of g. Now, the range of a function is the possible y values it can have. And g, as we can see here, is a quadratic function. It's quadratic. And a quadratic function has either a minimum or a maximum point. Okay, so it either has this type of shape or it has that type of shape. So, of course, a quadratic function, its range is, is limited. Okay, it's not going to be all real values because it has a minimum point below which it never goes. Or it has a maximum point above which it never goes. Now, this one, of course, as you can see, the, the coefficient of x squared here is going to be positive. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, it's going to be, have a smiley face, as they say. So it's going to be the type of, of, of shape which has a minimum point. Okay, as we can see here, see here this is the minimum point here. It's going to be this kind of shape here. So in order to find the minimum point of a quadratic function, what we need to do is, is we need to do something called completing the square. So that's what we need to do, completing the square. Okay, so we need to take this function g of x and complete the square for it. So let me just write it as y for now. So y equals x squared plus 2ax plus 2. Okay, here it says x is all real numbers. So... You know, there's no limit to the domain. So the range now is going to be dependent here on what the vertex is. So in order to find the vertex of a quadratic function, what we need to do is we need to do something called completing the square. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to basically make sure it says 1x squared, which it does. So I don't have to modify anything with that. I'm going to put my bracket square. I have x. And I'll have plus a half of the coefficient. Now, the coefficient is 2a. A is a constant, remember? So it's going to be half of 2a is a. Okay. And then we're going to take away a squared. Okay, take away this number squared. Now, why do I do that? Of course, we've got the plus 2 at the end. Why do I do that? Because what I'm doing is I'm trying to replicate this with that. This is exactly the same as... This has to have, have exactly the same value as that. So if I expand this bracket, I'm going to get x squared plus 2ax. But then I'm going to get plus a squared. And I don't want a plus a squared. You see, there's no a squared here. So I've got to take away the a squared so that this, when I expand it, it will give me x squared plus 2ax. So I have the same value as that. And then I've got the plus 2 at the end. So that's why I am doing that there. Okay, that's why I have to take away the a squared. Now, this is now in the form that we need. This is in completed the square form. So we know that the vertex of a quadratic in complete the square form, you're going to have the a value exactly the opposite of this. It's the value of x, which makes this bracket 0, which is minus a. And what's left behind outside of the bracket is the y value. So I can write that as a minus a squared plus 2, or if I want 2 minus a squared, looks a bit neater. So this is going to be the lowest point on the y, 2 minus a squared. It, it says find the range in terms of in terms of a, range of g in terms of a. So you're going to have 2 minus a squared. That is going to be the vertex. Um, that is going to be the lowest value that this ever reaches, 2 minus a squared. So that means the range of the function, therefore, and because it's g, I'll say the range is g, g of x is greater than, equal to, greater than or equal to, sorry, 2 minus a squared. So there we have the answer to part a. Simple, just complete the square, for a quadratic to find its range, to find the vertex, the vertex then will tell you if it opens upwards, then the the you know the the range will be everything greater than or equal to the vertex. 
if it opens downwards, it'll be everything less than or equal to, uh, you know, the y value of the vertex. Okay, so that's how we deal with part A. Just a little side point. Uh, why is this the vertex? Why is this the lowest point this will ever reach? Well, if you think about it, this part, this squared part, x plus a squared, that whatever you get, whatever value comes inside here, okay, it's always going to be squared. So it's always going to be positive. It's never going to be negative. Okay, it's always going to be squared. So it's, it's never ever going to become negative. So you have minus a squared plus two. You're never going to be taking away anything from that. It will be something adding to that. Okay, the lowest it can ever be is zero. Because zero squared is zero. So you think about it, the, 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 whatever's going to be, everything is, this is always going to be something more than minus a squared plus two, except when it's zero, when it will be equal to minus a squared plus two. So that means this expression will never be able to go below minus a squared plus two. And what is the value of x which causes this bracket to be zero? Well, it's minus a. So when x is minus a, this becomes zero. Okay, whatever value of x makes this bracket zero is the x value of the vertex. And whatever's left on the outside is the y value of the vertex. And then thereby we can find the range. So I hope that's uh, clear for you to understand. Now, part B, it says here, given that g of, gf, um, gf3 equals 7, find the two possible values of a. Okay, so what does that mean here? Well, gf3 equals 7. So first of all, basically it's saying to you, first, what, find out what f3 is. Okay, first of all, find out what f3 is. So f3 is when you put 3 inside this function. So you're going to have that's 1 minus a times 3, which is equal to 1 minus 3a. Okay, so we know that f3 is equal to 1 minus 3a. And they've told us to put f3 inside the function g. That's what this means, g f3. That's what this actually means. Okay, it means put for f3 inside the function g. So what's g f3? Well, you're going to put f3, which is 1 minus 3a, inside the function g. So they're asking you to put 1 minus 3a basically inside the function g. And g is this function here. Now, I could use it in this form here as well, in this complete as a square form. I could use this form, okay? But I'm not going to because um, supposing I made a mistake with doing this. If you made a mistake with this, that mistake would be carried through in the next part. So I'm going to take the safer option and substitute 1 minus 3a into what I already have, okay? That's, that would be the safer option. In case you make a mistake in the first part, then you know you you know they they won't um, carry through the error if you could have used another method. So I'm going to put one minus three a into this to make sure, and I don't think it makes too much of a difference actually in in the working. So you have one minus three a squared plus two a times one minus three a. Basically, you replace the x in the function g with whatever's in this bracket, which is one minus three, and then it got plus two at the end. So that's um, x squared, so one minus three a squared plus 2a times x, so 2a times 1 minus 3a, and then plus 2. Okay, so I need to find out what that is equal to. That's going to give me, if I square this bracket, I'll have 1. Then I'll have 2 times 1 times minus 3, which is minus 6a. Uh, 2 times 1 times minus 3a is minus 6a. And then I square the last term, it will give me plus 9a squared. And I'm going to have plus 2a, expanding that bracket, minus 6a squared, and plus 2. If I simplify that, this is, this is now gf3. I'm going to get 1 plus 2. Well, let's, let's do the a squared terms first. You've got 9a squared minus 6a squared, which is 3a squared. You've got minus 6a plus 2a, which is minus 4a. And you've got 1 plus 2, which is 3. And then it says, it says um, basically, gf3 equals 7. Okay, so I found what gf3 is. I have to say now that gf3 equals 7. So I've got to equate this to 7 and then find the values of a for which that is true. So I have 3a squared minus 4a plus 3 equals 7. So this is a quadratic so I should bring everything to one side and say equals 0 to if I can see if I can factorize and use the zero product property. So 3 minus 7 is minus 4. So now I need to try to factorize this. I'm going to use my window method. Okay, so I'm going to use my window method here. I've got 3a squared and minus 4. So I know the product of these two terms must be minus 12a squared and the sum of these two terms must be minus 4a. Okay, it looks like 6 and 2, isn't it? 6 and 2 and the 6 is negative. So 6a minus 6a 
and plus 2a. That will give you that will give you minus 12a squared, and it will give me minus 4a when I add them together. That's correct. So I see the common factor from these two terms is a, and from these two terms it's 3a. So I have a times something gives me 2a. That's a times 2. 3a times something gives me minus 6a. That's minus 2. So I end up with 3a plus 2 times a minus 2 equals 0. A quick check to make sure. 3a squared minus 6a plus 2a. This is minus 4a and minus 4. Correct. So we know that there. We've got the correct thing. So now we can just find the values of a by using the zero product property. Either 3a plus 2 is 0 or a minus 2 is 0. So a is equal to minus 2 thirds and a is equal to 2. We have now solved this equation and we have found the two values of a for which this is true okay so i hope that was clear to you all and you understood that and um if you want to see other questions from the solomon f paper as i do them i'll compile them and i'll put them in the playlist that you'll find in this area here if you want to see other questions from uh, the uh from the topic of functions and graphs from P3, you can find um, the playlist for that over here. If you want to find other questions from my end of topic worksheet number two, questions I've answered from that, you'll find in the playlist over here. And then I will put up something else to do with P3 in the card at the top of the page. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.